Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Random. Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kind for being a part of the show. We're going to have a great show for you today, as usual. Anyway, welcome aboard, uh, Senor Marca Rodnin. How are you doing today, my dear brother? And E2247, only those, where is everybody? Where are all my peeps? Nobody is around. Are they throttling me again? I wonder if that's what's happening. Paul Fleming is in the house from Powder Springs, Georgia. Uh, but where is everybody else? Where are all our peeps? Let me go ahead and check to see if uh, all of my messages went out. Lee Grant is in the house. Uh, likewise, Eric Hayes just came about. Okay, Jay Ray is in the house. All right, I was wondering for a second. Nobody was around. It's like, oh my God, am I going to be speaking to an empty house? Well, at least Twitter is filling up. Okay, let's 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 keep going, folks. Let's keep going. Uh, para ver, para ver. Let me make sure that everything at Restream is getting restreamed, because you know every so often that's what gets down. Uh, let's see, Restream. Make sure we are streaming everything that is supposed to be streamed. And it looks like uh, our stream is going, going, going. That looks like it's going to everybody. Okay. Good, 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 good. It's funny because the stream on Twitter now, uh, you, you can know when a, when a company wants to make more money. All these corporations that control streaming, they have one policy and then overnight they change the policy. Now, in order to stream on, in order to stream on Twitter, you have to have a registered account, a paid for account, an account that, well, you know, so... Luckily, in this business, I make sure to do that. All right. Let's see. Uh, we got John David in the house. My guy, he says. Rick Browning in the house. Ricky B. Sharp. Welcome aboard. Uh, we also have uh, Para Ver Quien Más Está Aquí. But anyway, we're in the house. Many people coming on in. More folks coming in. All right. Let's go ahead and start moving. Uh, Michael says, Egberto, did you watch Sean O'Brien's speech at the RNC? No, I didn't. Haven't seen much such a blatant class trader in in a while. Did the dude get bought off? Just remember that when uh, that when the Nazis came into power, the unions tried to cozy up to the Nazis. Oh wait a minute, I did see it. I, I forgot who he was. You're talking about the AFL CIO guy or the Teamsters guy? The Teamsters guy. Yes, 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 yes. You know, I, supposedly he wasn't there to endorse. That's not what he was there for. He was just there to engage, supposedly, right? Right, Michael? But we know what that meant. He was bought off. You know, when they talk about unions, even unions can get co-opted. And that is when you have to vote them out of power. But, of course, one of the problems is that uh, some of these guys, because of who they represent, they're Trumpsters. We have to really educate folks. We have to educate the ranking file and ensure that they get rid of Sean. That's what's their next job. All right. Michael Radin says, PBS highlighted a couple of lines from the speech. The American people aren't stupid. They know the system is broken. We all know how Washington is run. Working people have no chance of winning the fight. That's why I'm here today, because I refuse to keep doing the same things my predecessors did against gigantic multinational corporations an individual worker has zero power. It's only when Americans band together in democratic unions that we win real improvements on wages, benefits, and working conditions. Remember, elites have no party. Elites have no nation. Their loyalty is the balance sheet and the stock price at the expense of the American worker. Is he an idiot? I, I don't use those words on air. But that just kind of flew out of my mouth. The Democrats under even Biden, a neoliberal, supports unions and everything that he says there. All the people supporting Donald Trump, it's anathema to that statement. Is the guy functionally, mentally deprived? Oh, God. Context hit. When Republicans hear challenging corporate greed, what they actually hear in their heads ranges anywhere from co conspiratorial dog whistle about the Jews to whatever they were told the last pundit in their bubble that liberal coast elites. And it's not actual critiquing the capitalist billionaire class. Perhaps worse yet, they don't recognize what they've become as history rhymes. 
People's Worlds, Labor History, Nazis Destroy Unions. On May 2nd, 1933, Adolf Hitler's stormtroopers occupied all trade union uh, headquarters across Germany, and union leaders were arrested and put into prison or concentration camps. Many were beaten and tortured. All of the union's funds, in other words, the workers' money, were confiscated. Former union officials were put on blacklists, preventing them from finding work. This was one of the first acts of Hitler's and the Nazis, some 7 million members at the time. The Nazis, put much like some far rightists in our own country then and now, saw the unions exercise significant power by representing workers' interests and promoting a democratic humanitarian outlook among voters. The unions presented a barrier to the Nazi effort to control all areas of life and create a corporate fascist state. Therefore, the Nazis made a priority of eliminating trade unions in Germany. I, it, I find it very disconcerting that he's bought off. I think he had to be bought off, not that he's dumb. He had to be bought off, Brother Rudden. He had to be bought off. All right. Uh, Vance says the, the state should reflect a certain interpretation of Catholic teaching and ignoring the separation of church and state. That's what can I say? Vance has mocked people traumatized by January 6th Christian nationalist insurrection and praised Hungary's authoritarian, uh, authoritarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. Vance praises toxic masculinity while condemning feminism and once uh, suggested that women in violent marriages should stay in them. He supports election denial and seeks to repeal basic freedoms like abortion rights and LGBTQ rights. Exactly. That is all from E2247. Also, E2247 says, Vance uses racist rhetoric against immigrants, supports mass deportation, and has advanced the hateful uh, fear mongering that the Democrats want immigrants and people of color to replace white Americans, racist, anti Semitic, great replacement theory. Again, we got to point these things out, but thank you for doing that. Paul Fleming says Project 2025 would change the 40 hour week to a 160 hour month so your boss could make you work extra hours with no overtime pay by cutting your hours later in the month. See page 592. J. Ray is in the house. My dear Ray from uh, uh, from uh, Third Ward is in on on YouTube. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Rick Browning says, "Good afternoon, Egberto." To which I say, "Ricky, buenos días, mi hermano. ¿Cómo estás? How are you doing, my brother?" All right. Uh, Rudin says the founding fathers would be horrified by the notion of Christian nationalism. Most of them were deists at best who recognize that theocracy results in a bloody mess as per European history until that time. Uh, Brandon says, by the way, my name is Mary. This is our joint account. Okay, Mary, how are you doing, my sister? John David says, MAGA, and with the thumbs up. Are you MAGA, John? Let me know. Let me know. We love MAGA too. All right. Egberto, yes, the Teamsters head. Exactly. I saw it. I saw it, and I saw it. Uh, Paul Fleming says, just two days after the former president was shot, it's a pretty remarkable decision for the GOP to have given a primetime speaking slot at their convention to their North Carolina governor nominee, who recently said, some folks need killing. It's time for somebody to stay it. It's a matter of necessity. It wasn't an old comment on earth for years. He said it this month. I saw that. I saw that. You know, and and all the the media is falling for all the crap from um, Donald Trump being softer. Donald Trump is somehow going to get, uh, you know, that that near death experience from Donald Trump has really changed him. It has made him more. I mean, I I, I wanted to gag today when I saw some of that on TV. I I and you know who was talking about that? Chuck Todd. So. I sent Chuck Todd a message, and let me show you the message that I sent Chuck Todd. I said, please, Chuck Todd, stop trying to humanize Donald Trump. Let's be clear. He only cares about himself. And stop buying their narrative of inevitability. He's not going to win. America is not gullible. And we will ensure they are educated to beat the clear and present danger. To beat this clear and present danger. Donald Trump, the clear and present danger. So no, we'll beat it back. 
All right, continuing, we've got Terry Kay says, why would progressives vote against the new voting registration? Nothing that can be implied as to be documented. Uh, all you have to do is read Project 2025. That's all you need. End of, end, end of story. Sound on YouTube. Actually, it's one sound system, and I'm seeing myself do the sound, so check your, 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 your connections, my dear sister. Uh, the Unity 45 pledge did not last two hours. Exactly, E2247. Shakula Hair Stylist is in the house. How are you doing, Shakula? Great to see you here. Bridge MTC says, sound is back. It is weird. Yes, it is weird. All right. Uh, Rick Browning says, Egberto, Ricky B. Sharp here, a.k.a. Mary, but I prefer L-P-I-P-H-I-N-I-C. -I -I How do you say that? Lepithophysis. <laughs> Late blooming progressive. Like, we aren't anywhere near left where we should be. <laughs> All right, girlfriend. Bridge MCP said, it's not every day that senators ask the attorney general to appoint a special counsel to criminally investigate a sitting Supreme Court justice, but Clarence Thomas represents a special case. He's a clear and present danger as well. Uh, he, I mean, Clarence Thomas should be ashamed of himself. All right, continuing, we have... Uh, Paul Fleming says, it's not only that Biden, who has a stronger record than Trump on job growth, unemployment, and economic, comparing Obama and Trump at the same points in their presidency, the economy grew faster under Obama. Hiring grew faster under Obama. The S&P grew faster under Obama. The unemployment rate shrunk faster under Obama. And the national debt grew slower under Obama. And it grew slow. Oh, so it was both, both the Democrats in front of him and behind him had a better economy. But if they shout it loud enough, people will believe them. So we have to correct the record over and over again. Uh, Lee Grant says, you have this shooter was Republican mantra, not a devout Republican as he attempted to kill the party standard bearer and top candidate. No, no, no. Most real Republicans have left the party because they think he is destroying the party. And it would be understandable that since Republicans handle all their business with guns, not that I, I'm just paraphrasing here that given that they have this gun culture, if they see something they don't like, including getting uh, getting getting the Donald Trump that they don't like, those doesn't seem feasible. That uh, given the gun mentality that folks in the Republican Party has, that that's what they would try to do, take him out. That's just who the culture is. That's just the ideology. I'm not saying everybody gonna follow it, but I'm saying it's a good way to look at it. Why it would be a Republican who tried to take out another Republican, a Republican that isn't fulfilling their requirements. All right. Michael Rodney says, Eric H. doesn't recognize that his, what his party has become. The party is just an evil house. And it's not the, it's the leadership is evil. And unfortunately, too many follow the leadership. All right. Let's see. Uh, Paul Fleming Jr. says, and it's ironic that after two favorable con and controversial court decisions, all that talk about weaponized justice system just went away. It's amazing, right? Sharkula here, Stylist says, no love for MAGA here. MAGA is a hate group. Yeah, but again, well, we'll talk that a little bit further down. All right, Eric Hay says, Lee Grant, Brayton, straighten out uh, Egberto on the Republican angle. No, I straighten you all out on what you actually represent. Thank you. Uh, Lee, the conspiracy on the left indicates the shooter was an anti pedo conservative who saw Trump's link to Jeffrey Epstein after the court documents were released and took matters into his own hands. And he was a Christian church when he said to kill persons. You know, it's amazing. Vidij MCP says, a leaked video of a phone call between third-party candidate Robert F. Kennedy and Donald Trump shows the former president expressing doubt about vaccines and recounting the attempt of, on his life and his subsequent phone call with Biden. Asking him to drop out and join him. Huh? I didn't hear that one yet. I got to I got to go ahead and save that off. Uh, let's see what else we got. Here is a video. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see if I can play that. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Once it's out there, kids, you can't take it back. Lots to take. Uh, but again, is it corroborated and verified? We don't want to have... Uh, we don't, uh, we don't, let's see. All right, hold on, guys. Let me see if I can get it. Bear with me one second.
when you when you feed a baby, Bobby, here we go. I'm gonna play it again. Let's do it. Something's wrong with that whole system. And uh, you know, and it's the doctors you find. Remember, I said I want to do small doses. Small doses. When you when you feed a baby, Bobby, uh, a vaccination that has like 38 different vaccines, and it looks like it's been for a horse, not a you know 10 pound or 20 pound baby. It looks like you're giving, you should be giving a horse this. And, and you, do you ever see the size of it, right? You know, it's this massive. And then you see the baby all of a sudden starting to change radically. I've seen it too many times. And then you hear that it doesn't have an impact, right? But you and I talked about that a long time ago. And yeah. uh, anyway, I would be, I would love you to do something. And I think it would be so good for you and so big for you. And we're going to win. We're going to yeah. win. You know, we're way ahead of the guy. And, uh, you know, he's interesting. He was very nice, actually. He called me. And he said, uh, how did you choose to move to the right? Because, you know, so I guess that's, people see it. You know, if I was, if I was looking straight up, right? He said, I, I said, I was just showing a chart. I didn't have to tell him the chart was on all the people pouring into our country. Right? But, uh, no, no, I just turned my head to show the chart. And some wrapped me it, it felt like a giant like the world's largest mosquito and uh, it was it was a bullet going around you know it was, what did they call that an ar-15 or something that was a big gun those are pretty pretty tough guns right wow wow let's see if there's anyway folks uh that was the that's what you guys just uh as i it now is that been corroborated already to verify that it wasn't something from AI. I hope it's been verified and it's not something from AI. Uh, I I am going to have to do, you know, I played it, guys. For anyone who's listening to this, I played that. But I am going to further verify that it isn't an AI scheme. And this is what I want to tell everybody that's out here. When we're presenting information going forward in this election, it is important that we validate things because AI is out there doing a lot of damage, okay? So we want to make sure to be following the rules. So I'm telling you guys, I am going to figure out if this is real after the program. And if it's real, I'll try to make a blog about it. So we'll we'll go ahead and, and, and check it out. Uh, we'll go ahead and check it out thereafter. Let me get this off of the screen. Thank you for that. Who gave me that information? I think it was Bridge and and uh, wait, who gave a, who who provided us with that? Uh, I think it was Bridge MCP with the leaked video. Thank you, Bridge. All right, let's continue reading here. Welcome aboard, Melanie Keelan. Uh, I thought, yeah, Melanie Keelan, welcome aboard. We also have um, Mike Cisak says the shooter was a leftist who hated the GOP and switched parties in 2022. To try and mess with the primaries. Oh my God, you poor thing, Mike. When when your world comes falling apart because you you realize you've been had, you do what some people do. They try to create a new reality so that they can live with themselves after realizing they've made a complete and utter mistake because they were so gullible. I'm sorry, Mike Cisak. I love you, but you're gullible. You're gullible. You always try to make an excuse. And the only ones that are looking out for you are people like me and Bridge and Radnan and all our progressives in here. Those other people don't give a damn about you as a farmer, as a nothing. To them, you are a nothing. Don't you get it? Be behind your back, they laugh at you. Can you believe those guys are actually believing the crap we tell them? Trump said it. I like stupid people. I can I can go in the middle of Fifth Avenue and kill somebody and nothing happens. They will still vote for me. I like the cult. Come on, wake up. All right. Shakula here stylist says, scary times are never dull. I'm not scared. I'm resolved. I want us to be resolved to get stuff done. Shooter came from a wealthy family. Go figure. Really? Did you see the house? Did that look like a house of a wealthy family or just maybe a, a middle class home? Come on now. Of course, I haven't checked that. So I, I, I just said that given the house that they're showing, it doesn't reflect that of somebody that's wealthy. But it could be that they live in a modest home 
even as they're wealthy. So I could have to take that back. All right, Brick Browning says, are Democrat progressive coalition and starting to create connections among various groups plan for worse scenario? Better we are uh, laser focused. If Look, we're going to win and we're going to win big. Uh, we can't build a coalition in August or in, in, in July. It's just too damn early because there's a lot of things that, look, you build your coalition too fast and it crumbles because people start to let their little differences get between you and then they, you get infiltration and all of that. I am telling my people not to worry, just educate people as we go. Educate, educate, educate. All right, that's what we want to do. Educate, educate, educate. So you said it's been verified, Mike Cisak. Are you talking about the video that I just showed? I'm glad that it's verified. Uh, uh, thank you very much for providing that information. Paul Fleming says, ain't it weird how J.D. Vance now support a man he called America's Hitler? While Democrats won't support a man who had a bad debate. Paul, that is not fair. I support, if Biden runs, I support him. But Biden, look, I tell you what, I'm going to play the video from uh, Lester, uh, from um, Lester Holt yesterday. I'm very pissed at Lester Holt. You'll see that I support Biden, but I still think we need somebody that can actually fight and go on the stage and talk. Biden is not there. Biden's intellect is there. His energy just isn't. But check this out and it will take it on. But by the way, I'm voting the Democratic ticket top to bottom no matter what. All right, let's go ahead and uh, play that and it will take it on the other side. Yesterday, I don't know who watched the interview between the president and Lester Holt. Uh, I think that, for, uh, you know, you know that I think the president does look old, etc. But I think the president did well when he uh, inter got interviewed by Lester Holt. And the one thing that I liked the best about what the president did with Lester Holt is that he pushed back. I was extraordinarily disappointed in Lester Holt last night. Have you s taken a step back and done a little soul searching on things that you may have said that could incite uh, people who are not balanced? Well, I, I don't think, look, how do you talk about the threat to democracy, which is real, when a president says things like he says, do you just not say anything because it may incite somebody? Look, I, 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 I have not engaged in that rhetoric. Now, my, my, my opponent is engaged in that rhetoric. He talks about there'll be a bloodbath if he loses, talking about how he's going to forgive all those, actually, for, I guess, suspend the sentences of all those who were arrested and sentenced to go to jail because of what happened in the Capitol. I'm not out there making fun of, like, when remember the picture of Donald Trump when Nancy Pelosi's husband was hit with a hammer, going, talking about, joking about it? This doesn't sound like you're, you're, you're turning down the heat, though. You've, you've talked oh, about no, the heat. No, 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 no. Look, when I'm turning down, we have to stop the whole notion that there are certain things that are contrary to our, our democracy that we're for. The idea of saying that you, uh, I didn't win the election, Every court in the land, every court in the land, I don't know, 20 appeals, said, including this conservative Supreme Court, said we won. The idea of having a, a loyalty pledge from all the folks who are in the Republican MAGA, not all Republicans, the MAGA Republicans, saying that, no, we lost the election, inflaming the people to say, uh, yeah, I mean. I, so so what, what can you and what will you do, at, at least things you can control to lower down the temperature, the rhetoric out there? Continue to talk about the things that matter to the American public. It matters whether or not you accept the outcome of elections. It matters whether or not you, for example, talk about how you're going to deal with the border instead of talking about people as being vermin. And all. I mean, those things matter. That's the kind of language that is inflammatory. Lester Holt, I don't know if you guys remember what I wrote yesterday in the vlog about false equivalencies when I told Democrats, you need to go out there and not fall for the false equivalence I knew was coming. And that false equivalence was going to say, tone down the rhetoric. There is only violent rhetoric on one side. Now, speaking about, and I repeat this, and I hope people hear this, if the truth that you are telling has a lot of 
violence in it because you are recounting what the other side is doing, the truth isn't then uncivil or incivil. Because the rhetoric out of Donald Trump's mouth, the constancy is violence, the constancy is ridicule, the constancy is simply tearing you apart. That is how he operates. And Lester Holt himself, who is a registered Republican, showed how they are all coming home to support an existential threat to this country. And folks now are wanting us to say we shouldn't use an existential threat because if you are telling a warped mind that someone is an existential threat to a country, isn't somebody going to attempt to take that existential threat out? Yes, through the ballot box. That is what we are all advocating. When we talk about the election of Donald Trump would be an existential threat, it means don't, it, those of us who know would say, that means don't vote for the existential threat. It doesn't mean to take an AR-15 and go after that existential threat. So let's be clear here. Democrats are going to be uh, are going to be they they will attempt what the media does all the time to create what's called a false equivalence. He said this isn't that similar to what he said? Absolutely not. Do not cop to it. The reason they're doing this is so that the evil that Donald Trump represents and that he does and he says isn't called out for the fear that you will be accused of generating some sort of reaction. Don't fall for it. And that's a blog that I wrote yesterday. That's a blog that I specified yesterday. And I hope people go back and read that. The fact of the matter is the violence, uh, the violent rhetoric is coming from the Heritage Foundation, as they, as uh, their their president said, uh, we are in for a revolution, but it will be bloodless if, if, and I'm paraphrasing now, if the left simply sits down and allows us to walk over them. It is the president, the former president who continuously, from the time he started campaigning, promoted violence of beating up people that, that try to express themselves in blowing people out of a, the, the park in Washington, D.C. And over and over and over again, if we fall for this, yes, then we will lose. So I think President Biden did a very good job pushing back on Lester Holt, and not only pushing back on Lester Holt, pushing back on the media, creating this equivalency. But I did wish that he had used the word, stop the false equivalence. Lester, remember this. And the issue I have with Biden is that he's not quick in retorting because he could have shut Lester Holt down right away, and he didn't. But I tell you, at least he pushed back. He pushed back. Uh, it, it was, I think Lester Holt was shameful. For those of us who get the directionality of questioning, Lester Holt was a shame. And he, had, he made his political, uh, uh, his registration as a Republican made it real clear. Uh, we spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. Absolutely join us, absolutely join us, absolutely join us. Anyway, folks, we have um, Paul Fleming uh, who says, we're working to become a mobility, uh, we, we are working to become the mo e mobility capital of the nation. Georgia now leads the nation in committed investments and permanent jobs. 
in EV and battery manufacturing, beating out every other state in the country, including Michigan. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you guys. I got the article right here. Keep up your great work in Georgia. It's amazing. Your 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 mag. Well, your governor isn't MAGA. He just knows how to play them pretty well. All right, Michael Rodney says, Eric, how many times does someone have to lie to you before you figure out they're a liar? Yet another man who needs to read fact checks before going into conspiracy mill. Yep, yep, I agree. Carl Cox says, can a member of the PDR Fosse show Carl Cox uh, comment to Egberto? He may not be able to see them. I'm seeing them. I, I just saw this one and I read one earlier. Uh, Paul Fleming says, at MSNBC, after watching Lester Holt last night, it's obvious he no longer has the ability to lead your newscast. I realize it was just one interview. But for the good of the network, shouldn't he step down for a younger anchor? He has embarrassed himself and you. He was an embarrassment yesterday. Completely. Completely. Actually, what he showed is he's just another stooge for the, uh, for the right wing. That's what he did. It's almost like he, you know, a lot of people are starting to believe that maybe Trump may win. And if he wins, we want to stay on his good side. Forget it, guys. He's not winning. Forget it. He won't win. We won't allow fascism to take over the country. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bridge MCP said, Carl Cox, I don't see a comment. Many times, as I said before, I have to click your comment and show it. Something has been wrong with the account. All right. Uh, Bi Mike C. Sex says, Biden is still an evil man. You remember what I tell you guys about projection? He really means Donald Trump. All right, Michael says, when Trump talks like a fascist, promotes sco uh, stochastic terrorism, promotes uh, insa insane conspiracy theories, denies reality, and everyone calls Trump out on that, then some nutter goes shooting. Who do you blame? Biden? No. It's amazing. that, that, that That's a problem, right? Bridge MCP says, Lester was really bad. Jeez, he was horrendous. Uh, er, let's see what else we got. Mike C. says, the violent rhetoric has been by the left. Dream on. Not because you, you, you wish your side wasn't violent means it's not. Your side is very violent. Very, very violent. That's why they have all those AR-15s. And I mean, just think about who are the ones that feel comfortable having a whole bunch of guns and using them. That just says it all. Paul Fleming says Donald Trump is blaming migrants in the U.S. illegally for fueling uh, violent crime as part of a presidential campaign. However, studies show immigrants are not likely to engage in criminality. Here is that research. I mean, again, but we got to put it out there. And thank you very much for doing that, Paul. We have to put out there every day uh, it, undocumented workers and uh, documented immigrants. They all have a lower crime rate than the people in the United States proper, than, than born Americans. Michael Rodney said, Egberto, if conservatives could look through their social media feeds critically and see how many posts promote anger, fear, and hate, they wouldn't be conservatives anymore. I understand. Chuck Punacho, hey, brother, it was great seeing you in Baltimore. Really, really enjoyed uh, seeing you and being around you for some time. Uh, list, uh, but Chuck Finacchio says, Lester Holt, once again, both sidisms, P.S. Actually, he wasn't even both sidism. He said nothing negative about Donald Trump. When Donald Trump is the one that is the most violent of them all. All right, Bridge MCP says, mega, uh, MAGA people here are out of control. How can they hear Trump talk and say the left is violent or fascist? Dear Lord, that is what's called willful ignorance, Bridge. Willful ignorance. Until he slashes their throats, they won't see it. Or until a seed is planted that finally makes that, that finally starts to sprout in their minds. And that's why I want my MAGA brothers and sisters to stick around. Because one of these days, a one of the seeds that we're planting in their heads is going to sprout. And then it's going to add that necessary non gullibility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Paul Fleming says, Paul Fleming says, Peter Buxton, whistleblower who exposed the Tuskegee syphilis study, dies at age 86, uh, who had Alzheimer's, revered for a uh, uh, for role in bringing to light one of our worst medical research scandals in the U.S. That wasn't a scandal. That was an evil deed. Uh, Mike says, thousands of leftists on social media have been celebrating the deaths of the firemen and father who died in Trump. They were also hoping for a better shot at Trump. 
Well, that's not me, and that's now progressives that I know. Anybody can go online and say, I'm a progressive, right? All right. Vries says, Egberto Willis, RFK has already made a statement apologizing for this video, saying he had a private videographer in his residence, and he should have told the videographer to turn off the camera, but he did not. He also wanted to say in his statement that he was embarrassed that this had happened. Well, you know, the guy still have a worm in his brain, so I guess Trump will forgive him for that. Uh, Mike Cisak says, Egberto is in denial that leftists are the violent side of the politician. Wow. You know, I, I guess you don't read reports. You don't read crime reports and all of that, do you? Poor thing. Uh, Stygen Birken Greek, welcome to Politics and Right. My take is they see uh, uh, the left as stupid animals controlled by the party. This dehumanizing worldview gives them permission to be valid. No, nah, it's not that. These are, look. Well, I won't say that here today. I'll let it pass. Uh, Mike C. said, so Egberto is being fascist because you don't want the, uh, what the majority wants. What the majority wants is not what you guys want. We've already proven that many times over. Uh, the last eight out of the last nine elections, the majority vote went to Democrats, not Republicans. Let's be clear on that. The majority of this country is not Republican, period. Uh, sometimes the, 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 the electoral college makes it look close, but let's get our facts straight, Mike. You are a minority in the country. You are the minority party, okay? Most Americans don't think like you. In fact, most Americans would love to rid themselves of you. They would like for you to just get in line and, 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 and support the policies that they want instead of all this crazy stuff that you guys do. Michael Rodden says, Egberto, if the race comes down to Biden versus Trump, daughter and old man who can't get two thoughts out versus a vicious liar who will overturn our democracy, Trump will win in November and we will suffer. What we have to do is we have to be the mouthpiece for, for Biden if he stays in the race. That we just have to do it. No two ways about it. We just have to do it. Uh, but he says they have guns and vending machines in GOP states. Wow. <laughs> oh lord all right eric says lower taxes lower energy costs national security and law enforcement are all needed lower taxes lower taxes on whom you know let's get real who pays for the stuff that these guys have ripped off michael says lee work on a trump vance era okay let's talk about that no more minimum wage no more workplace protection no more social security no more unions Corporate power runs unchecked. Dystopia awaits. Paul Fleming says, breaking news, VP Kamala Harris has officially challenged J.D. Vance to a television debate on August 13. That happened already. I saw that yes yesterday. Stagenbergen Greek. Uh, Michael Rodden, the article says it's ammo, not guns. Do they also have gun vending machines? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I seen an article on it, Michael. That is amazing. But anyhow, I have another video for you now. This one here is uh, Democrats, and I think I, I, I kind of alluded to this yesterday. So let's go ahead and do it right this minute. The attempted assassination of Donald Trump came right as we were doing uh, the last plenary at the Networks Nation 2024 convention. And I know if anyone there had known about it, based on what we were talking about and narrative, etc., we would have been on point with the narrative to ensure that while we always make sure to say we don't support violence, we also not allow the violence that is generally induced by the right to somehow change that narrative of positivity and of making effective change to the working class for it to somehow get involved and try to make us mitigate what we must not. In other words, try to make us not forcefully deliver our message. And you know what? To, uh, the first text that I received was one that said, oh my God, Egberto, do you believe the sympathy factor will cause Trump to win this election because of the attempted assassination, to which I said no. Others called and said, do you think this was staged? I also said no. 
But was it an opportune thing that happened to the Trump campaign? I don't want to sound callous. Let me be frank. I would never want something to happen to any politician, but not only to any politician, but to any human being, any American citizen, any citizen of the world. I don't want shot or assassinated. Oh, we are raising hell because an attempt on, on, on Trump's life was made. But every day, the attempts on the lives of hundreds of Americans are made. All of the times. And no enforcement of gun laws or no uh, rethinking of gun laws or no rethinking of social programs that would mitigate the killing, the murder of people is really thought about. But it comes close to home in the case of Donald Trump. And the world must change and we must concentrate on slowing down the rhetoric. Yeah, we should concentrate on slowing down the rhetoric on the right because that's the rhetoric. That is the rhetoric of violence. Ours is the rhetoric of truth. The rhetoric that says we need to provide health care. We need to provide gun control. We need to provide things that maintain life. We need to provide things, and we also need to provide freedom. We need to support the maintenance of freedom. Making those statements, Trump is an existential danger to America's freedom. That's not a conjecture. That's a statement of fact. We prove it by his own testimony, by his own words, by his own past. So we have to maintain those realities and trying to acquiesce to what the media would like to see as some sort of a uh, false equivalence will not do the American people any good. And you know, for once, I usually consider Martha Raddatz very much supporting of the Republican rhetoric, allowing it to go further than it did. And when you see that in this short piece here, she actually says and points out and pretty much makes it clear, yeah, Donald Trump is the one that actually promotes violence. Listen to these words. I want you to listen to this and we'll take it on the other side. Anchor Martha Raddatz. And Martha, I know you've traveled around the country talking to voters in our deeply divided nation right now. In some ways, this is a horrific symptom of the underlying division in this country. It, it certainly is, George, and I'm sure that will probably continue. We saw President Trump raise his right hand, as John just described, and we've seen those pictures. But we could all also see him say what I believe was fight fight. That was his first instinct. And this is a country divided. This is a country, uh, we saw the violence yesterday, the horrific violence yesterday. And, and we've seen it in places. And we've also seen this morning, we've, we've heard President Trump say he wants the country to come together, to be united. But others are directly pointing the finger at President Biden with, of course, uh, no evidence that he incited this or 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 had anything to do with this assassination attempt. Uh, we heard J.D. Vance, Senator J.D. Vance, who was one of the leading picks for vice president in a tweet say, this is not just some isolated incident. The central premise of the Biden campaign is that President Donald Trump is an authoritarian fascist who must be stopped at all costs. That rhetoric led directly to President Trump's attempted assassination. Again, there is no evidence of that. We do not know the motive of that shooter at this point. Uh, and others also, Ramaswamy, Vivek Ramaswamy saying, uh, President Biden's ritual condemnation of political violence are insufficient. No amount of verbiage today changes the toxic national climate that led to this tragedy, uh, saying that Trump's safety is nothing short of an act of God. And I think you'll see a lot of supporters uh, thinking the same thing. And also, George, we have to point out, no matter who the shooter, what the shooter's motives were, no matter who the shooter is, you are going to hear conspiracy theories going forward. No, no question about that. But as, as you, you point out those statements from J.D. Vance and Vivek Ramaswamy, of course, uh, President Trump and his supporters have, have contributed to this violent rhetoric 
as well. Well, a- absolutely, George. We were just looking back this morning at some of the things that uh, former President Trump has said. He warned last March of potential death and destruction if he were charged by the Manhattan District Attorney. Our country is being destroyed, as they tell us, to be peaceful. Uh, Trump in January warned of bedlam in the country if the criminal charges against him succeeded. And of course, in March... He said, now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That will be the least of it. He said he was partly joking and that that was taken out of context. Uh, But those are indeed his words. And you have heard it from supporters as well. Now, folks, this is no joke. Democrats cannot acquiesce to this false equivalence that many are asking them to do. Oh, let's reduce, including Biden. Biden goes on TV and says to reduce the rhetoric on both sides. The rhetoric of violence is only on one side, bar none. The other side is simply telling the truth. And sometimes the truth sounds uncivil because the truth of which we speak is in effect uncivil. And that is why it cannot stop. That is why we must continue to go out there and tell the truth to the American people. It's just the truth. Absolutely so. Yeah, Bridge, I have several of these. If you also notice, these things would be a bit different. You'll get different kind of little stuff that makes it a tad bit different than the others. Plus, I have one that is the, the, the logo is all blue. So, yes, I'm not wearing stinky clothes or I'm not wearing a, a different thing every day. But this is the uniform. This is the politics done right uniform. Yesterday, however, I did use the uh, Netroot starter to commemorate that I'm coming in. It was a Netroots week that I had yesterday. All right. Uh, let's say uh, I feel for Brother CSAC. You know, Brother CSAC can't take the truth. He really, really can't take the truth. He says those were misquotes. We have the videos of him saying these things, but somehow we are misquoting uh, his fewer. We are misquoting the fewer of the United States. No, we're not. The guy's a violent SOV. Period. Period. A violent SOV. And he's he's violent. He's, he's making many other people violent. Carcock says Trump surviving the assassination attempt is not the act of God. Like the attempt on Hitler late in World War II, Satan protected Hitler. <laughs> Hey, that's a good one, actually, technically speaking. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what's interesting? The reason he can't stick to forming our brother CSAC is that the Republican policies have screwed them over royally and, and took all their stuff to the big corporations. You know, but what can I say? Michael Rudnin says, New York Daily News. Uh, 93% of guns used in New York City crimes are from out of state. Federal studies show, yeah, the people just jump out to uh, jump out to a red state, buy guns, and then drive into blue states. So the, even the crime rate uh, in blue states that is lower for gun violence than in red states, they're exporting their violence. They're exporting their violence. Think about that. They are exporting their violence. These are narratives we have to start using. When they talk about guns in Chicago, say, but Chicago don't make guns. They have to jump over to Indiana to get the guns. We have to start fighting back the way we should. The people that are evil, we know who they are. The people that are, are profiting from the blood of others, we know who they are. And it's not incivil to tell that story. It's not incivil to tell the truth. That's it's simple. Let's get with the program. But look, I love you guys. I mean, all of you help me out here with these uh, commentary. Uh, let's see what or what else is here that I need to read before we shut this baby down. The violent areas in the U.S. are blue control cities and states where gun control is straight wrong. First of all, they get the guns from the red states. Yeah, important bad important your violence. And the truth of the matter is there is more violence based on social economic reasons. That's why Appalachia has uh, similar violent levels as well, period. Okay, it's that simple. 
they just they, the, the difference in a lot of these areas is whereas the only things on record is what police uh, put into the record. As I, as I mentioned right here in Kingwood, we have Kingwood, Texas, uh, where I live. It's a bit more uh, there, you know, it, it's a, a more white area, mostly white area. When the police officer hold on to the kids or people, and not very few times are they going to take them down to the station. They'll give them a slap on the wrist, tell them to go home or take them home. In, in parts of the, of the city where it's a lot of people of color, that doesn't happen. And let's go to my sister, Bridge MCP. I love that my sister, Bridge MCP, has called in. How are you doing, Bridge? I'm sweating to death. It's 100 here. How do you guys take this crap? How do we take the crap? Which crap is that? It's so hot. It's uh, the, the heat. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, is it, it hot? Is it, it, have you been at 100 degrees for three days? Yeah, it's so oppressive. You can't do it's, anything. It's oppressive. Uh, but, you know, over here, the difference between the North and the South is everybody in the South has air conditioners. Everybody. And if they don't have air conditioners, they go out into the um, into the mall or something like that. Or we also have things called cooling centers. Uh, so um, that yeah, they, uh, they yeah. open up different places. Most people have most people have uh, AC up here, but. It's the humidity and the dew point that's so bad. Oh, it it, it is oppressive. Oh, it is oppressive. I, I hear you, girl. I can't breathe. I know. And I, what I, I wanted think... to say was is that um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's funny. I, the MAGA people, the, the worse it gets for them, the, the worse they get. And um, like Eric had just said something about the German. Germany rhetoric is what gets people mad. You have to understand what you were saying correct. Were you there? No, Eric, neither were you. Okay? <laughs> was. Okay? How's that? Okay? But it is German talk and Nazi talk that they are saying. They don't like to be called out for what they are. It's fascist talk. He imitates even Hitler's moves. But that's getting a little too detailed. But he is a, like a Nazi fascist. The Project 2025 is a playbook for that. And they're saying, no, it's never going to happen. It's a good thing. It's this. I'm like, either they can't read or they can't see or they can't hear or there's something wrong mentally with their brain. That's the only I conclusion I can come to. Well, I, I, I said it a bit nicer today on KPFT. And let me tell you how I said it. And let me explain to you, my sister. I used to be a homophobe. I used to be a sexist. There is somehow that I was stupidly wired. Egberto Willis was an idiot. Egberto Willis was an a-hole. Egberto Willis, for the years that he lived up, up until he was 22, 23, 24, I don't remember exactly how old I was, when I made the flip, I was wired incorrectly. My mind was sufficiently open no, to be rewired, and I learned. It's your environment. And, right, right. I was, was going to say it's your environment. It's where you are. You're a man. I mean, so there's that going on. but. And also, you don't really develop till you're like in your 20s, the brain. Right. I mean, that's why women develop maturity earlier. Right. They go out with older guys because they're more mature than 20-something-year-olds. So there's a reason right. for that. These guys on here are not 25 years old. These people but, are just completely saturated with complete lies. Yes, it is Mike Farmer. It's sexist. Yes, okay. Whatever, you idiot. I can't take him anymore. He's just, he's well, just out of control. Sorry. Let, let me just say and, this, uh, but he, I, you know, you, I, because you gave the answer right there. You gave the answer, right? Uh, they have been conditioned for so long. And if you notice, there's a certain characteristic that all, our, our friends all share, right? Uh, it is that, that, that uh, sense of, uh, uh, what is the word that I want? Priv it's not just privilege, but it's 
is a sense of entitlement to be above everybody else, right? And whenever yeah. that is challenged, yeah. whenever that is challenged, the you know they they block they block out everything and they go into survival mode. And what is that survival mode? To maintain your supremacy, to 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 maintain your unearned, unwarranted, undeserved supremacy. And that is what we fight exactly. every day, and day in and day out. That's the thing. That they're white males mostly because they talk about trans immigrants, brown people, black people, gay women, anything that, you know, it goes against their white privilege, their white male exactly. privilege. And they don't understand they live in farm country or some crap that the whole world lives in another world. I mean, look, grow up in Manhattan, grow up in the city and see, we have everybody here and everybody gets along fine. There's no bullshit yeah. unless you get, sorry, I said that word, That's unless fine. you get down to the white male people, then it becomes like a war, like we're hurting their feelings that they're not. And that's why a lot of women will go for Trump thinking he's a strong man. He's right. never lift a hammer in his life. He's never mowed a lawn. He doesn't drive a car. He doesn't do anything ever. Anyway, that's all my stint I have to say is that. Well, well let me let me so just say like that he was saying. Yeah, but you know what? We will we will win. It's just funny. The worse it gets, the worse they get. And and you know what? And that has to happen. You know you know when um you know when you are an an an, an addict, and in order to break the addiction, they have to make you suffer and suffer, and you go through the pain. And as as you're going through that pain to to wean you off the addiction. You get violent. You 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 start to have all these types of behaviors, and then you're broken. And that's what we have to do. The it's catharsis also, has to occur. It's also the same thing. I'll, I'll hang up now. I see it's time. It is, and it's also like driving a car. Right. You overcorrect yourself. You right. Go too far to the right, you're like, oh crap, and then you go too far to the left till you get back into the center. So right. It's, it's going to take time and. They don't think Project 2025 is going to happen to them, but <laughs> what? But it's but wait, wait, it but it has already started. Project 25 included what they did to the Supreme Court. Project 2025 20, included oh, yeah. not following precedents. Courts used to follow precedent so that there would be some consistency in law. They mm -hmm. no longer follow precedents. Yeah. That means nothing matters anymore. They don't get it. But anyway, I Bridget, know, I got to like, close like this baby down. Right. Close down. Right. I just wanted to say that. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so kindly, everybody. Anyway, thank you, Bridge. Love you, girl. Anyway, folks, we got to get out of here. But before we get out of here, I want to ask everybody to please become subscribers to our uh, please become subscribers to our newsletter. That is how we get to pay for what we have to do here. Uh, your support means absolutely everything. So please go to politicsunright.com slash newsletter politicsandright.com slash newsletter and please become a paid supporter of our program. I thank you so kindly. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.